Today I've got a nice number theory problem from the 2012 Math Olympiad. But before we jump into the solution, I'd like to shout out to my climbing coach who writes all of my programming for training, Pachi Osubiaga. So it's been a real game changer having someone write my own programming instead of just doing it all myself. Anyway, he doesn't really know anything about like my math YouTube channel or anything, but he's from Spain, so that's cool. So anyway, let's find all m and n, which are natural numbers, and by natural numbers I mean positive integers, satisfying the following equation. So we have n plus 1 all to the power n equals 2 times n to the m plus 3n plus 1. Okay, so we're going to break this into a couple of cases, and the first case will be maybe the simplest case, which is what happens if m is equal to 1. Okay, so if m equals to 1, then that means this equation kind of collapses to something nice. So that something nice is 2 times n plus 3 times n plus 1 equals n plus 1 all to the n power. But notice that's equivalent to saying 5 times n plus 1 equals n plus 1 to the n power. But you can see that there's probably no solutions to this. And I say there's probably no solutions to this because we have an exponential on the right-hand side, whereas on the left-hand side, we have a polynomial. In fact, we have a linear polynomial. And it's well known that exponentials will grow larger than linear polynomials, like after a certain point. But now, how could we show this? Well, maybe we would first check that n equals 1 is not a solution. So that's pretty easy to check. I won't even worry about that. And then we'll check if n is bigger than or equal to 2, then that implies that n plus 1 to the n is bigger than or equal to n plus 1 squared. But n plus 1 squared can be, be multiplied out, and that gives us n squared plus 2n plus 1. But now let's notice that this is strictly bigger than 5n plus 1, but not always. This is only when n is bigger than 3. And you can check that just by moving some things around and seeing that you get n squared is bigger than 3n. So if n is bigger than 3, then n squared is clearly bigger than 3n, which means that we've got this n squared plus 2n plus 1 is bigger than 5n plus 1. But now looking at the extreme left and right hand side of this inequality, we see that we definitely can't have this being true. But notice that that is only when n is bigger than 3, so that means we also have to check the case when n is equal to 2. But I'll let you guys do that. That should be a fairly easy computation. Okay, so all in all, what have we done so far? We've shown that there are no solutions in this case when m is equal to 1, which motivates us to move on to the next case, which is when m is bigger than or equal to 1. So we just got done showing that in the case when m equals 1, there are no solutions to our given equation. So that means we'll move on to all of the rest of the cases, which is when m is bigger than or equal to 2. But notice if m is bigger than or equal to 2, that means that n to the m is a multiple of n squared. But being a multiple of n squared means that it's congruent to 0 modulo n squared. Now, if you want to see a little bit more detail on this, that's because we can write this as n squared times n to the m minus 2. But given the fact that m is bigger than or equal to 2, we know this right here is a whole number. So in other words, it's a natural number. So we have a natural number multiple of n squared, but being a multiple of n squared is the same thing as saying that we are congruent to 0 mod n squared. So, but this motivates us to working with this whole thing, modulo n squared, and seeing what sort of simplification we get. Well, let's first look at the right-hand side, modulo n squared. So notice that the right-hand side, which is 2 times n to the m plus 3n plus 1, will now be congruent to th 3 
n plus 1 mod n squared by this observation that we just made. Now let's look at the left-hand side. Obviously, if we want the right-hand side to be equal to the left-hand side, then they have to be congruent mod n squared, but we're just like reducing them independently of each other. Okay, so let's look at the left-hand side. So we've got n plus one to the n, but we can expand that using a binomial formula. That'll be the sum as k goes from one to n of n choose k times n to the k. Oh, this should be k from zero to n. Okay, so let's look at this kind of spread out. So we'll have one, that's the zeroth term, plus n choose one times n to the one, that's the first term, plus n choose two times n squared, plus all the way up to n choose n times n to the n. So again, like I said, that's just doing a binomial expansion. But let's check it out. These last terms right here are all multiples of n squared. That's because we've got the n squared term there, the n cubed term is next, all the way up to the n to the n term. That's also because all those binomial coefficients are positive integers. Then we'll use the fact that n choose one is n, meaning that n choose one times n to the first is n squared. So we have one plus a multiple of n squared, which means when we reduce this mod n squared, we get one mod n squared. But let's look at what we've really got here. We have this right-hand side is congruent to three n plus one mod n squared, whereas this left-hand side is congruent to one mod n squared. But putting those two things together, we see that 3n is congruent to 0 mod n squared. But that means that n squared divides 3n. So n squared divides 3n, but that means that n divides 3. But if n divides 3, since 3 is a prime, that means that n equals 1 or n equals 3. And now let's analyze each of those cases. So working along the path that m is bigger than or equal to two, we've determined that n is one or n is three. And now we're just gonna look at each of those separately. So in the case when n equals one, this collapses quite a bit. So notice we'll have one plus one to the one. So in other words, we'll have two is equal to two times one to the m, but that's two plus three times one, so that's plus three plus one. So in other words, we have two equals six, but that's a clear contradiction. Great, so that means if we get a solution, it will only occur in this last case when n is equal to three. So let's see what we get for n is equal to three. So we'll have three plus one to the three, so that's four to the three is equal to two times three to the m, so two times three to the m. Let's recall we do not know m here. m collapsed in this equation because we had one to the m, which is always one. Anyway, we've got two times three to the m plus, so three times three, which is nine plus one is 10. So we've got something like that. But that's actually easy to simplify. Four cubed is 64 minus 10 is 54. So we have two times three to the M equals 54, which tells us that three to the M equals 27, which tells us that M equals three. And that does it. That's the only solution left to check. And that's the one that works. We have N equals three and M equals three. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.